how did you feel it went on that stage for you? I felt good about it. I mean, you know, it was it, it was fast. It was. Um, it feels fast. It, it on feels stage. fast when you're there. I'm sure for the viewer it went slowly, right. but um, I felt good. I mean, there's so much to discuss, and, yeah. and there's just not enough time to cover the issues. I would have liked to have had a much longer conversation about environment. I would have loved to have a, a much longer conversation about the economy. Um, it, it, you know, there are so many issues yeah. that I think the American people actually want to know where we stand and that we're thinking about them. Uh, from the moment uh, the vice president came out on stage, I think the first thing he said to you, and it's gotten a lot of pickup and a lot of people talking about it online, uh, I believe the words were, go easy on me, kid. I'm wondering how that, you interpreted that. I, I, that that's what he wanted me to do. Um, I didn't really think much about it, to be honest with you. The kid, that's what people, has. An, was that an issue for you at all? I, no, no. The, um, did you, the, the, the. But I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because we're both on that stage running for president. So I'm, I'm pretty clear about who I am. Right. So nobody's going to define me on that stage. Right. Yeah. Um, it, in terms of, of health care, you've just put out uh, your plan. Yep. Um, in past debates, people have raised questions about where you were on whether or not private insurance should be taken away from yeah. people. Uh, your plan is essentially kind of a Medicare for all, uh, except uh, people can keep their plans uh, if they like them for the first 10 years. Is that correct? Essentially, there's a 10-year phase in. But it, what I've done is that, you know, I have to tell you, Anderson, I've been listening to people. And I said from the first day that I announced my candidacy that I, especially at this phase of the campaign, will listen as much as I talk. And I've been listening to people. And they want to know that they have an option to keep a private plan. And I respect that. And I, you know, listen, I, I knew I was going to take hits for it. I knew it. But I, I'd much prefer to be relevant at the end of this process than to stick to something that I don't believe is the best option and the best way to go for the vast majority of Americans. Do you think uh, Democrats who are holding on to Medicare for all, take away private insurance from everyone, uh, is that a politically, is that a, a, a suicidal political move for the Democratic Party? I mean, I'll leave that to the pundits, but I know what people have told me. I know, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time in Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina and Nevada. Uh, People want to know that they have an ability to have an option that is not only the, the, the option of, of government-sponsored health care, but also that there is a private option. So here's what I propose to do, is to allow the private insurance companies to basically comply with the requirements I'm putting in place for who will be part of our Medicare system. So for example, it's not, they can no longer be about jacking up the prices around deductibles and co-pays. It will be the case that regardless of whether you have a private Medicare plan or a public Medicare plan, and when you walk into that doctor's office, you're not going to have to lay down a credit card. You lay down your Medicare card. But in, in your plan, eventually, everyone would be taken off a private, uh, the private plan that their company currently has. Yes, but let me. But I, it's important that I explain that because I think there was a, a, really a misinterpretation of that on the debate stage tonight. Employers right now offer their employees a private plan. I am separating the employer from your health care. So you have the option of signing up for a private plan under Medicare. But it's not going to be through your employer. So if you leave your job, you can take And that's exactly the point. I can't tell you the number of people that I have met of all ages who say they feel stuck in the job they have because they need that health care plan. That should not be the case in America, especially when we talk about the fact that over the next 15 years, up to 40% of the jobs that currently exist will no longer exist. We have to adapt to the changing times, which includes that a lot of people are changing their employer on a much more frequent basis than used to be the case. Used to be the case, you come out of school, high school or college, you go work one place, and that's where you work until you retire. That is no longer the case in America. And no one should have to worry about losing their job or changing their job because they may not have health care once they make that decision. In terms of the, uh, the discussion you had with Vice President Biden in the last debate, it came back up. Uh, he has not in any way apologized or backtracked uh, from what he says his position was back then. Do you, do you yeah. think he should? I, well, we have a disagreement, and that's it. I mean, we have a disagreement. I, it, it, you know, let's revisit the issue. Because um, he's, he's not portraying it in, I mean, he would deny that he is pushing a states' rights argument 
uh, when in fact it seems to be that's what he sounds like he's supporting. Yeah, well that's certainly what it sounded like on the debate stage last time. I was actually surprised that he said it that way. It's one thing for him to have some justification for what he did, but to say that essentially that this is a state's rights issue and that the federal government shouldn't intervene, I find to be absolutely, frankly, outrageous because it has been the federal government that we have needed to intervene on civil rights issues, be it on issues that relate to, to, to race, issues that relate, you know, voting rights, civil rights act, the equality act that I hope to pass. All of that is because the federal government needs to act on civil rights yeah. issues. I mean, the National Guard had to be called in. and you know, Yeah, of course, of course. So we have a disagreement, um, you and I. Some of the toughest critique uh, or, or attacks at you came from Tulsi Gabbard. Mm -hmm. uh, just for our viewers who haven't seen it, I just want to play some of that and, and, uh, and, and have you respond. That's okay. Right. I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response. As the elected attorney general of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. D did you did you expect that uh, from Tulsi Gabbard? Uh, had had you had interaction about that in the past, and how do you think it went? Well, I mean, listen, I. Th this is going to sound immodest, but I'm obviously a top tier candidate, and so I did expect that I would be on the stage and take hits tonight because there are a lot of people that are trying to make the stage for the next debate. Right. Yeah, it's do, the, for a lot of them, it's do or die. Well, yeah, and especially when people are at zero or one percent or whatever she might be at. And so I did expect that I might take hits tonight. Um, but, you know, listen, I think that um, this coming from someone who has been an apologist for uh, a, 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 an individual, Assad, who has murdered um, the people of his, of his country to, like cockroaches, um, she who has embraced and been an apologist for him in a way that she refuses to call him a war criminal. Um, I, I can only take what she says in her opinion so seriously. Um, and so I, you know, I'm prepared to move on. Uh, in terms of just being on that stage, the, the learning curve of it, it's obvious, you know, candidates get better and better and better through this gauntlet. Yeah. And it's not a pleasant gauntlet yeah. and it goes on for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself the way you were tonight, much different than the way you were the last debate and that debate the way you were, I don't know, two months ago? I mean, do you feel your a quickening? I mean, do you feel a, 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 a comfort level? Well, I mean, certainly th there is nothing normal about this process. <laughs> and I don't know that there's much in, in the normal this feels human totally experience. Normal to right, exactly. <laughs> that would prepare one for this process. I only exist on TV. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> yes. And people come up to you and hug you as though you're yes, their brother. I am, yes, yes, everybody. Of course. And you are, in a way, <laughs> yeah. uh, virtual brother. Yeah. Um, but so there's obviously there's nothing normal about the process and and so there is a learning curve there's no question and um, and I'm enjoying I have to tell you I don't know what it says about my my personality but I'm really enjoying this process I'm enjoying being the thing I enjoy most is being out there you know the the meetings that we take the town halls the the interactions with people who show up on a Sunday afternoon when they can be doing a thousand other things right when they have priorities they have responsibilities and they are there because they love our country country. They are there because they are serious people and they want to listen. They're going to evaluate. They ask questions. They challenge you. And I am growing in the process. Do I you? am. And I, and, I, and I do feel very strongly, Anderson. I, let me just say, I fully intend to win this election. 
But for me, the, the metric of our success will also be that at the end of this process, we are relevant. And the only way I can ensure that is to make sure I am listening as much, if not more, than I am talking.